Welcome to the iPad Podcast, a weekly podcast from Max Future. Okay, welcome to episode 80 of the iPad Podcast. This is Lex at Max Future, and today is the 13th of November, and we have a lot of iPad related stuff to go. So, thanks for listening. This is a chit chat free podcast. And uh, you can support it by giving it good ratings in iTunes on, and also in YouTube and Blip TV. Thanks for listening. Okay, so the first story in the iPad podcast for this week is that it, if you like autocorrect, there looks like there's going to be something new coming up. Right, not right, right now, but somebody found out some secret in iOS 5 that shows that there might be something great coming out in terms of autocorrect. And the thing that seems to be coming out is the ability to see word suggestions built into the keyboard. And, um, you know, that's going to be kind of cool. Another thing that's going to be uh, in there that's sort of a secret is a um, secret panoramic photo function in iOS 5. And, you know, these are cool little hacks. Now, the WashingtonPost.com had a little story here. It says, iOS 5's hidden auto-suggest, no jailbreaking required. And so you don't really need to jailbreak. Uh, the big thing is that um, besides adding a, a row of words, there's going to be a go and search button is going to be replaced by confirm, allowing you to select what you've typed and move on. Um, so anyways, it could be that Apple soon is going to make the autocorrect function in iOS much better. And, um, you know, that's kind of cool. And also, I think it would be really cool to have a secret panoramic photo function. Now, the people who, I guess, found that are the Verge.com. They had an article out sort of detailing this, entitled, iPhones running iOS 5 have a secret panoramic photo photo feature and they said that uh, a developer by the name of Conrad Kramer had discovered a panoramic mode hidden iOS 5's camera application which when enabled you can create a panorama by tapping the capture button and moving your phone from left to right across the stream scene. Uh, Supposedly this Kramer individual posted the details on his Twitter account. Um, Let's see he did this on November 7th. Um, So it's unclear, according to TheVerge.com, why this feature was disabled before iOS 5 was released, but we're hoping that Apple will, you know, release this in a future update. That and the autocorrect function being better. I know I would like it to be better, and let's hope Apple does make it better. Now, one of my dreams is to get rid of my cable TV service. Uh, I just really despise it. I despise it for many reasons. Um, One reason is that it's expensive, Um, you know, including my high-speed Internet connection. Time Warner Cable is charging me $176 a month. That's crazy dollars. Now, about $44 of that is the high-speed internet connection. And the rest are for two cable boxes with DVRs in them and some TV channels. And to make matters worse, I sign up for HBO, which is expensive too. But the thing is, I hate the the DVRs. I hate the cable boxes. I never know uh, what's playing on what channel. It's really slow, the clicking through the menu on the, on the cable, Scientific Atlanta cable boxes. And I really wish that I could just dump them. And I, I feel like I'm close. I'm close because I have an Apple TV and I have an iPad. And I'll tell you something. The iPad with AirPlay is, and I've been saying this for a long time, a, a completely souped up Apple TV because there are these great video and TV content apps on the iPad, which if you have an Apple TV in your room hooked up to a big screen TV, you just press a button on your iPad and that TV image goes from your iPad to your big screen TV. 
and I feel like I've been getting close to cutting it off uh, my cable TV because all this great content has come to the iPad particularly Bloomberg News uh, I think NBC has content ABC has content and the one thing that's been sort of keeping me from cutting off cable television is NFL football. I mean, I like to watch NFL football on the weekends. I like to root for my team. My team was the New England Patriots. Um, but I like to see other NFL games. And I felt, you know, that I was close, you know, to doing this. Um, but the problem was the NFL did not have a live streaming TV app for the computer or the iPad until now. And for some time, the NFL has this thing called NFL Sunday Ticket to Go, which uh, DirecTV offers. Now, you, now before, until this season, um, you had to have DirecTV. And if you had a DirecTV account, then you could um, pay like whatever, 350 bucks for the year and get like all the NFL teams streamed on Sundays. Um, and then at some point, DirecTV or NFL offered it to people who had Sony PlayStations. So if you bought a Sony PlayStation and you did not have a DirecTV account, you could get it. Now, I don't have a DirecTV account. Where I live, you can't get DirecTV. The building I live in, you can't get DirecTV. But someone tweeted something, and I checked DirecTV's website, and it looks like DirecTV now is letting you sign up for this NFL to go thing, even if you don't have DirecTV. You have to certify, however, that your building can't get DirecTV and that you can't get it. And it costs one payment of 350 bucks and you get every game every Sunday now now this is now making it tempting for me to just cut the cable I would only basically keep high-speed internet from Time Warner cable and just dump the rest because I really hate it and um, the way this works is this NFL Sunday ticket to go um, there's an app, there's a free app from DirecTV NFL that you download to your iPad and, um, and, and you can just sign in with your email once you, you know, once you have uh, paid for this service and you get live streaming. And I, I, I guess it works with, um, I guess it works with, um, your Apple TV because the, the Apple II the iPad 2 uh, mirrors everything to the uh, to the uh, Apple Apple TV. Now, this um, NFL Sunday ticket, you get live streaming video of in every out of mar market NFL Sunday ticket game. You can switch from gr game to game at any time. You can watch the final yards of every scoring drive on a dedicated channel. You can, which is called the Red Zone channel. That sounds amazing. You can get highlights. You can re relive the big moments. Um, you can um, see scores and game status for the current week's completed and in pro progress games. And you can get instant stats. Now, I wonder if this works on the app um, over 3G. That would be really great if you could, um, if you could get it uh, 3G. Let's take a look in the App Store. And um, it says here that um, uh, you can, well, it says it doesn't seem to be limited to just Wi-Fi. So this would be really cool because you could be remote. You could be at a football game. Wouldn't that be cool? At a football game and then watch all the out-of-town games. Um, the reviews are um well i don't know the reviews aren't good it says how ridiculous that i pay 350 dollars for a sunday ticket and that's not enough now they want to charge an additional 50 dollars for a subscription um uh, on the phone app terrible um but i don't know if that's correct it looks like it's free 
So anyways, I'm very excited. You might be very excited. Uh, so it's the NFL Sunday Ticket Direct TV app. It doesn't look like you can sign up for the service through the app. I think you have to go to a website and pay for it. I have a link on my blog uh, for this podcast. So I think this is fantastic news. And I think, I think frankly, within a year or two, a lot of people who have iPads and Apple TVs are going to be cutting the cable cord or the satellite TV cord. Okay, so stats have come out which show that people who have iPads tend to watch video longer and are more involved with video than on other devices, particularly Android devices. Electronista.com reported this in a story on November 13th entitled, Tablets Watch Longer Video iPad Crushes Crush Android in Use Oila Shows iPad Owners More Involved in Video. So there's a company, I guess, called Oila, that's spelled O-O-Y-A-L-A. And they did a study, and they found that on average, uh, iPad owners watched 1 minute and 17 seconds of video for every minute of viewing on the desktop, or more than a quarter of viewer. Uh, That they were also more than twice as likely to reach the end of a video, while only 30% of desktop viewers even passed a quarter of the clip. Um, so yeah, I mean, the tablet is a sort of better device to watch a video. You feel, you know, you feel more intimate with it than on a computer. Remember on a computer, you're sitting there close to the monitor and it's propped up and it's, I don't think it's an ideal angle, but when you have a tablet in your lap, it's kind of, kind of cool. So, you know, basically the iPad, according to this, uh, survey, really dominates in terms of, um, you know, having engagement in viewership. So, you know, good news for people who are into the iPad and for Apple. Okay, so Apple released an update for iOS 5, which works also on the iPad and the first generation iPad called the iOS 5.0.1 update. And among other things, it, it allows you to activate Multi- multitasking gestures on the first version of the iPad. Now, multitasking gestures are these sort of multi-finger swipes that you can navigate between apps and go back to the home screen and do all sorts of cool things. And that was a feature for the iPad too. But apparently, this feature is now there for the first iPad. And all you have to do, according to ZDNet.com, to turn on the multitasking gesture is click settings general and then scroll down to multitasking gestures and flick the switch that's at the bottom of the um, of the um, screen Um, so as edinet points out that there are three multitasking gestures all making use of four or five fingers Uh, you can pinch the screen when in an app to go to the home screen You can swipe up to get the multitasking bar. This is, according to ZDNet, one of the most awkward to get right in in their opinion. And you can also swipe left or right to move between apps that are open. So, you know, this is good news. It it seems that Apple is taking care of people who have the first generation iPad. Now, I think the iPad is really the future of Apple, and I think it's going to be taking over and replacing ultimately the Macintosh. And I say this because, you know, just the, the immense popularity of the iOS devices. And I do think that, um, you know, the iOS devices are going to get more powerful and more useful and, uh, and eventually replace the Macintosh. Now, one sign that, you know, we're heading in that direction is uh, I was in the Fifth Avenue store last week uh, with my son, and um, I noticed there was always a section in the Fifth Avenue store in New York for kids, and uh, they had like a low-hanging table with these round, round you know, ball-like seats uh, that you could sit on, that kids could sit on, and uh, they could play with the iMac. Well, Apple replaced all the iMacs with iPads for kids, with kids' games. So um, what does that say? But it's not just that. Electronista.com reports on on, uh, November 12th 
that Apple is swapping Genius Bar MacBook Pros with iPads. And uh, it says in this Electronista.com story that Apple is planning a significant revamp of the Genius Bar that could both reflect the changing of the guard and improve the experience for customers. And there's a rumor uh, on Saturday, November 12th, um, that Apple stores will supposedly replace the MacBook Pros with iPads. Um, and I, I could see that happening. I mean, the iPad is a much friendlier, useful device. Um, and I do think that, you know, Apple's pushing in that direction. So I do see that the iPad, already you see a lot of Apple employees walking around Apple stores with iPads. So it would be natural for it to come to the Genius Bar, I think. I think, you know, whatever content that they have on their Mac, they can put on the iPad. I mean, really, they're just really answering questions. I don't know to what extent they're really using the MacBook Pro to troubleshoot uh, a device. Um, now, that if they do need to hook up like a uh, uh, an iPhone or iPod Touch or iPad to a device to reset it, I'm sure they could pull out a MacBook Pro. But for the most, for most you know, Genius Bar users, they're just looking at content. So I'm not surprised by that. Now, the iPad is being used more and more in business. And uh, it's being used, I guess, by a lot of people as a point of sales device. Um, you know, there's obviously the Square device that can be plugged into it. And you can take credit card transactions. Um, but then I came across this story in the San Francisco Gate or the San Francisco Chronicle, and I guess it's based on a press release from a company called LittlePad. And basically, they're saying that there is something called the LittlePad Kiosk, uh, which is a secure iPad enclosure and provides a self-service point-of-service system. And uh, basically, it prevents fraudulent access to customers' credit card data by being the only iPad enclosure with a completely integrated magnetic stri stripe reader. All of the enclosure options prevent theft and tampering of the iPads with integral locks and mount points that allow for boint bolting to a floor, counter, top, or wall. And it says here the lily pad is Apple approved and it has rigorous testing which ensures compliance with iPad warranties and radio transparency to eliminate white Wi-Fi cell or Bluetooth signal interference and so it says that it's the only iPad card reader enclosure with pass-through power that you just plug it into a standard power outlet outlet and leave it and you don't have to you know charge it or uh, there's any draining of the battery and it has an integrated carrying handle so this sounds really cool um, it's apparently going to be launched at a expo in New York City uh, in November of this year at the 2011 International Hotel, Motel, and Restaurant Show. Now, on this website, I found a picture of it, and it's kind of cool. It looks like this um, casing around uh, the iPad, uh, and there's um, you know a, a way to mount it on a sort of a standing, um, you know, holder that you can tilt it and, and plug it in. So it, it looks really cool, and I wonder if more companies are going to take the iPad and meld it in with some special gear to make it, um, you know, sort of an industrial point-of-sales device. Maybe in the supermarket, maybe you'll see these iPads bolted into some case and uh, operating. So... Um, it's pretty it's pretty cool it says here um, uh, it's the first and only iPad kiosk approved by Apple um, so I mean I just think we're gonna see more of this stuff it's um, it's very cool um, so check it out it's called lilypadkiosk.com okay so if you like sting the rocker Apparently, he's doing something very cool for his fans. 
he's releasing an app, and this comes via the Wall Street Journal on, uh, on what, November 11th, John Jurgensen writes. He's got an article entitled, Sting's Message in an iPad. And basically this Monday, but I'll tell you right now, the app, which is free, is already in the iTunes or the App Store. But basically he's going to be releasing a free app which combines music, concert footage, photographs, and videos. The central feature is footage from Sting's performance last month at New York's Beacon Theater, including duets, duet, duets with guests like Lady Gaga and Stevie Wonder. Um, the app is only available for the iPad, and basically, you know, they're releasing this uh, to help, you know, promote his music so it's free um so let's see it says here users navigate through the app sting 25 in multiple ways a sliding timeline breaks out photos and video from uh milestones uh there's a navigation bar um actually let's go to the app in itunes and basically you can use dual screen airplay Experience these performances wirelessly on your television while exploring additional content on your iPad. There's hours of concert footage, including interviews, footage, and music v videos, and uh, 10 chronological chapters. You can learn about the inspirations, uh, collaborations, uh, and charitable endeavor endeavors. Um, and you know, like the Wall Street Journal said, there's exclusive concert footage, including performances by Bruce Sp Springsteen, in addition to Lady Gaga and Stevie Wonder. There's also Rufus Wainwright, Herbie Hancock, and Brantford Marsalis. So this is pretty cool. This is free. So um, it says you can listen to Sting's albums from your iPad's library while browsing the app. Uh... Huh. So I guess the app recognizes if you have Sting's music in your iTunes library. So, um, you know, I think, look, it's free. Already it's got some ratings. Um, one person writes, five stars, comprehensive and well designed. I, uh, I think I'm going to download it. Now it's pretty big. The size on the iPad is 440 megabytes. Again, it's called Sting 25. So check it out. It's on the iPad. Okay, so in terms of cool gadgets for your iPad, there's something I saw on the pursue, pursuitist.com website. Something called the iRoom iDock and Wall iPad Mount. And basically... It's a powered and motorized in-wall mounting solution for the iPad, the first generation, and the iPad 2. And um, it looks pretty cool. It, um, it, um, there's an announcement here from uh, the company that makes it called Brackerton. It's a leader in mounting solutions. And basically it... Um, the dock integrates fully into the iPad and into a room's design. And so I guess you have a, uh, a mechanism with an invisible proximity sensor. When activated, the sensor recognizes when you are nearby and switches the iDock to the open position, allowing you to insert your iPad. After 10 seconds, the iPad intake closes again automatically. The proximity sensor can also be disabled to lock the iPad permanently in place. When the iPad is inserted in the dock, you have total control of audio and video equipment or smart home applications on the device. The iDock also automatically charges the iPad battery when mounted. So it sounds kind of cool. It, um, uh, it's a solution for, it says here, for private homes, yachts, retail, hotels, restaurants, medical practices. Um, you know, it basically... Um, you know, has this, I mean, the cool part is that it's a motorized docking and release feature. And um, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. There's a little bit of a video. Let's um, 
let's take a look at the video. But, uh, you know, in the video, the, somebody's got the iPad mounted, and um, they, they press a button, and it's sort of this, like, little sleeve, like, tilts forward, and you can take out your iPad. So it's a good way to mount it on a wall and take it quickly off the wall. Um, so, um, you know, I think it's... You know, it's definitely innovative, and if uh, you know, I'm not sure how much it costs, but I do have a link to uh, the website, but it, it looks very cool. Okay, so speaking of cool gadgets, uh, one gadget that came out that Wired.com highlighted that I think a lot of people might consider getting is something from, you know, the biggest hard drive maker, Seagate. Seagate has a device called the Seagate GoFlex Satellite. Now, I may have talked about this before, but essentially it's wireless storage that puts movies into your iPad, according to Wired. It costs 200 bucks, and for 200 bucks you get this portable, uh, flex, you know, very light, portable, 500 gigabyte hard drive that has a Wi-Fi radio inside, and you can connect it wirelessly wherever you are and I guess it'll like sync with your iPad so you know it's it's pretty cool um, it's built it says for the iPad iPhone and Android and um, you know it's uh, uh, I, I think what you do is there's a free iOS app from Seagate which uh, has an embedded player that allows you to watch the videos and play the song stored on the drive. So it's not going to dump this stuff into your iPad, but it's going to be a way to sort of access a lot of movies if you have limited storage on your um, on your uh, iPad. Now I could see getting this. I have, you know, a whole bunch of movies backed up on an external hard drive, and um, you know, let's see what the let's see what the reviews are here for the the app. Um, it's generally gotten good reviews in the app store. It says, app is good, would like it much better if I could delete the files that are uploaded. In the Navy and the iPad with the portable HDD is great. Would be awesome if I could delete the files through the iPad. Pretty good app and device. Love the fact that I can watch a movie and resume playback where I left. Also love the ability to sort files in alphabetical order. Also the search bar is good. Somebody else writes good app. I, a few things that could be improved with an update when viewing folders, if it has a long title or several characters, you can't see the whole name. So look, it's a free app that works with this uh, GoFlex hard drive, and it might be a good solution if um, you know you if you take your iPad on the road and you you want to bring a lot of movies with you that you've stored on your hard drive and a lot of songs, this could be the solution for you. So check it out. Okay, so a device that I've been itching to get for my iPad, but it uh, might not be something that you need, but I need is something by Blackmagic. Now Blackmagic makes sort of high-end devices for people who are into video and video editing. And they have a device called the Intensity that's just coming out now and I think it costs somewhere between two and three hundred dollars but here's what it does it allows you to capture from your iPad screen recording you see Apple doesn't allow apps to screen record video on an iPad you can do a screenshot but unless you jailbreak the iPad you can't do screen video uh, recording now, in the past, I've jailbroken my iPad and done screen recording through Display Recorder by Ryan Petrick, but the current iPad 2 doesn't have an untethered jailbreak, so I can't do that. And I'm kind of sick of jailbreaking it because the main reason I've been jailbreaking my iPad is to do the video screen recording. But this, like, $200 device sounds like just the ticket because what it is, it's actually a device that hooks up by Thunderbolt to your Macintosh. Now Thunderbolt is this incredibly high speed connection that we now have with uh, Macintoshes. And basically it allows you to connect 
to a Mac uh, Book Air or anything else that has Thunderbolt connection and record uh, HDMI, 10-bit HDMI into the Macintosh. So I could take my iPad, plug it into this thing. This thing would then plug into uh, uh, a Macintosh uh, through Thunderbolt and you would have S, uh, standard definition and high definition recording. So it's very cool. It's coming out now. I think it's about um, $200. Um, let's see, what are the tech specs? It's got um, analog video input, uh, digital video input, one HDMI in input. It has one HDMI output. It has uh, two channel HDMI audio input. It has two channel audio output and it has Thunderbolt so it's very cool and I highly suggest it even though I haven't bought it. Okay so this is definitely going to be the gadget podcast for the iPad because uh, I just seem to have a lot of stories about all sorts of cool things that work with the iPad. Now CNET had a story on something that looks really clever with the iPad and it looks like the iPad's sort of taken over everything. Uh, the CNET has a story about something called the Sunset Smart Homes and apparently um, you know you can have these really cool automated homes and the iPad is the uh, the heart of it that controls it and here's what CNET says in a mixed-use pedestrian oriented transit district in Palo Alto Sunset Magazine is focused on, on design ideas that transform modern living spaces into innovative automated homes of the future. And the Sunset Smart Home is a duplex project that has been open for public touring. It's an idea house designed to highlight forthcoming high-tech, eco-friendly, and energy-efficient concept, concepts that might want one day become standards of home building. In one of the digital homes, a wall-mounted iPad accompanied by additional 7-inch touchscreens on different floors is the centerpiece, controlling everything from climate to lighting to home security. And the entertainment center is run via Apple TV. So they have some pictures of this, and it looks kind of cool. There's like, um, I don't know, an iPad in the wall, and um, I guess some automation like different parts of the house are run by this automation so maybe you know one day somebody will do this they'll make a uh, you know an automated house and an iPad uh, will be the you know the control device or the the brains of the stuff so very cool I have a link to this in the uh, podcast notes now there are also some cool sci science future science fiction apps that are out there uh, regarding the iPad. And Mashable had a story about an, an app called Unami for the iPad, which it describes as the ultimate TV companion knows what you are watching. And basically it says that Unami is a new iPad app that aims to enhance second screen experience to broadcast and cable TV program. And basically Unami... Um, can tell what you're watching on TV and it works with a large cross-section of programs and networks both broadcast and cable based and uh, the app offers a quick access to cast and crew listings description of other recent episodes now it's in the App Store and it's free and basically I mean this is what it says Unami for iPad your TV companion and uh, it basically says, here are some of the features. It can automatically syncs to live or recently broadcast programs aired on all major networks, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, USA, TNT, MTV, Comedy, History, National Geographic, Discovery Food, and many more. And it has rich show info, cast, bios, and photos with one-click access to official show pages, fan sites, Twitter, Facebook, Wikipedia, etc. It has real-time social feeds so you can catch what friends, cast, and critics are saying and join the conversation. And it has smart search uh, where you can recommend keywords and link. Links mean you're just a click away from even more fun stuff. That's what the description says. 
So it basically, it quotes what Mashable says, that it's a TV guide on steroids. So this looks kind of cool. Basically, I guess it can sense, um, it can sense what you're watching and then, you know, give you all this content. Now, this could be really cool if you're watching some great movie or some, you know, uh, reality TV show like uh, um, America's Got Talent or something like that. Um, so, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. It's free. It's called Umami. It's U-M-A-M-I. It's only five megabytes in, uh, in sort of weight. Um, but this is really cool. I mean, think of it. It, it can sense what you're watching on TV, I guess either visually, maybe you point your camera to it, or it just picks up the audio and knows, and maybe because of the time zone, and, um, and gives you all sorts of information. So check it out. I think it's pretty cool. Now, for the iPad to really thrive in the enterprise environment, that means at work, either in a Fortune you know, 500 company or any sort of company or any government office. Ultimately, the question is, um, are people who are right now using Microsoft Windows and Windows apps and Microsoft Office going to be able to use the iPad? Is it compatible? And Microsoft right now hasn't released any Windows, um, uh, you know, Microsoft Office apps on the iPad because obviously it's going to go with uh, uh, Windows Windows um, 8 tablets. So the question is what what can you do? Now it, it is, I found this article in PC World on November 8th entitled Can Windows Play Well on the iPad? And here's the thing Citrix which provides virtual desktop infrastructure and has uh, an iPad app. Apparently, they interviewed um, PC World, um, one of the officials at Citrix, and they're really working hard on helping uh, Windows apps that were never meant to really work on the iPad to work on the iPad. And, um, and they're doing it by creating an SDK that um, that works with the um, these apps on the iPad. So this sounds really, really cool. Um, here's what here's what they say. Um, the basic thing. This is what this guy Bear says. He says the basic thing we provide is the ability to get legacy window apps using non Windows devices. We deliver the ability to to virtualize Windows apps and of course Windows desktop on the iPad. At its base level a lot of criticisms are well founded in so much as Windows apps and Windows desktops were never designed for touch capabilities in small screens. So they say that this guy Bear from Citrix says two weeks ago we announced a new SDK software developer kit that basically sits in front of Zen app in the virtual app delivery infrastructure. This allows end users, customers, system integrators, and partners to write extensions that reformat, repaint the actual Windows app to be more native to the devices it runs on. Uh, it also allows developers to leverage things like GPS, accelerometer, cameras. So it's kind of interesting. It sounds like Citrix is going to help a lot of Windows apps come and work on the uh, iPad, which I think is really cool. So I'm looking forward to that. I think the iPad has become such a big, big market that uh, a lot of people are sort of working to try to bring these, you know, the vast enterprise Windows apps to work on the iPad. And if that can be achieved, then the iPad's truly, I think, going to penetrate the enterprise. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so we're going to continue to talk about gadgets for the iPad. Um, Wired had another article out on November 11th about another device that works with the iPad that also looks kind of cool. 
uh, called Stable Pro, and it's an iPad stand, and uh, it looks kind of cool. Uh, uh, it basically, uh, they're saying, Wired says it's the Cadillac of stands, solid built, well appointed, heavy, and pricey. And so basically, it looks like this very chic metal curved um, stand that has like a four prong, you know, holder for the iPad. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's expensive. It's a uh, hundred bucks if you want it in silver or white. The black version is only 85 bucks. Um, it says here, if you pair the Stable, Stable Pro with the Bluetooth keyboard, the stand's height helps transform the iPad into a viable laptop alternative for many tasks. Um... So if you look at the video version of this, it looks kind of cool. It looks very, um, I don't know, like very Buck Roger-ish. Um, and the metal version, I'd get the metal version. It looks very chic. So it's, um, you know, it's made out of a solid base. It has four pounds of American steel sitting on top of rubber feet uh, and allows up to 80-degree motion uh, in any direction. So... It's pretty cool, so check it out. Well, we know that the iPad is becoming more and more used in medicine, and it looks like there's a new app that helps doctors with the really hardcore stuff, like medical imaging viewing. And tabtimes.com has an article that says that the Federal Drug Administration has cleared an app called CareStream View Motion. Uh, which is a medical image viewer with mobile devices like the iPad. And it's basically a web-based viewer that the company says offers convenient on-demand access to patient imaging data by doctors and other medical staff anytime. And it, uh, it's been, I guess, approved by the, you know, the people who approve medical devices. So it's, um, you know, it sounds pretty important and um, I'm sure it's going to make um, you know the iPad even more useful in medicine so if there are any doctors listening to this check it out it's called CareStream View Motion and it provides real-time imaging uh, very interesting okay so um, the Wall Street Journal Market Watch had an article out about a I guess they were publishing a press release regarding a new unusual app for the iPad that goes for about 10 bucks. And the app comes out from David Stewart. I don't know if you remember him. He's the British musician who is one of the co-founders of the Eurythmics. And basically it has an, an app called Creativity, which professes to be a revolutionary new iPad app uh, with Mark Simmons based on their acclaimed book, The Business Playground. So, basically, let's see, the article says, um, uh, Creativity is an inspirational and entertaining guide to innovation in creativity that includes a foreword by Virgin founder Sir uh, Richard Branson. Uh, and um, it says there are interviews with creative thinkers such as Mick Jagger, Microsoft co-founder Paul Al Allen, and a host of stories, techniques, and tools like Idea Spaghetti and Wheel of Distraction. Um, the, it's, so it's a multimedia experience app, according to this article, which includes a full color, uh, color book complete with photographs and illustrations, and numerous interactive features uh, and it's also narrated by the Oasis you know, voice actor Lynn Gallagher and can be switched on in any places so I don't know to me this sounds kind of confusing let's see what it says in the App Store you know it says a lot of the same stuff it says it's a fun-filled and vi vibrant multimedia experience that includes not only the full color book and numerous interactive features but also a complete audio version of the book it incorporates a revolutionary tool called f star which allows users to highlight any word or phrase to access related media news and products it's the first time it's ever been used on an app and, pro and provides it at 
uh, depth of information and social connectivity. So this, I don't know, I'm, I'm very confused by this, um, this app, uh, Creativity. It's supposed to unleash your creative mojo. Uh, it's supposed to put, it, you're supposed to put it to work in business and the rest of your life. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm willing to spend 10 bucks on this. It sounds kind of gimmicky. Uh, it has a live RSS feed of new ideas and information about creativity that is curated by David and Mark. There are 13 original games that app users can play alone or with others to help them come up with ideas and enhance their personal creativity. Uh, and the games were created by Dave and Mark and includes, uh, includes one where framing problems in the right way to get the best ideas using visuals to simulate create, creative process. So I don't know. I mean, this sounds like some weird sort of game for business people to be creative. But th to me, this sounds kind of pretentious and kind of goofy. Now let's look to some of the ratings here. Well, I mean, it's gotten it's gotten some ratings already. I don't know if these are shills or actually people who bought the app. Uh, one person writes, I've been playing with this app and I'm f fully in the spirit of it. Just for the read of the book, it's well worth the price. As I play with the games, the creative neurons are firing and feeling grounded at the same time. Kudos to Dave and Mark for making the creative process accessible. This person gives it five stars and says it's inspiring and practical. In fact, all of the reviews are five stars. Um, somebody else writes, set aside some time to play. This is awesome. Exploring and playing never felt so productive. This app is like walking through an exciting city that you've only read about but never actually had the chance to visit. So much to take in. In today's world, there's such a pressing need to inject creativity, innovate, innovation, and storytelling into business. And this app does a tremendous job of awakening the, the latent creative spirit in all of us. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to the playground. Well done. Huh. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm still a little skeptical of this to spend $10 on something that's supposed to get my creativity uh, in place. I mean, the graphics look kind of you know, goofy and fun. Uh, who knows? Maybe David Stewart, you know, speaks to corporations and stuff like that and makes a lot of money doing that. Uh, this app came out on November 10th in the book category. It is a multimedia book. Uh, it's 106 megabytes in size. And again, it's called Creativity um, by Double Apps, Inc. Anyways, check it out. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to buy it. Okay, so thanks for listening to the iPad podcast. This is episode 80. This is Lex from MaxFuture.com. Thanks for listening. Again, this is a chit-chat-free podcast all about the iPad, iPad-related things. And any positive feedback in the iTunes store would be greatly appreciated. Also, in, uh, you can see the video version of this in YouTube, Blip TV. Also, I have it as a feed into the iTunes store as Apple Things both the video version of this and the Apple podcast that I do. So check it out. Thanks for listening and see you next week.